Okay, so welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at some trig integrals. And with our trig integrals, we're going to be taking a look at when trig powers are, are raised, or trig values are raised to a higher power, like we have sine or cosine raised to the fifth power, or tangent raised to the cubed, or something like that. And there's different rules to use, and with the different rules to use, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the Pythagorean identities from our, our pre-calculus class. So in this first one, when sine or cosine is are an even excuse me, are an odd power, we want to use the Pythagorean identity. So you replace with sine squared with one equals, excuse me, with one minus cosine squared, or cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. Now, we're, the one we're going to be replacing is the one that's an odd power. So when I have something like sine to the fifth of x dx, I'm going to break that down into sine to the fourth times sine. Then I replace sine to the fourth with one minus cosine squared, that's sine squared, and I have to square that because it's raised to the fourth and then it's still times sine. Square that out, square that binomial out, let u be cosine, the derivative is negative sine, so I take a negative out front, write it in terms of u, you know, raise the power by one, put cosine back in. Simple as that. Um, in, these, in this video I've kind of typed out the integrals, um, you can pause the video as you need to to, to see where, where uh, you know, where you need to copy it down. Um, <coughs> The, the, when the sine and cosine are odd, it's not too bad. When the sine and cosine are even, it is a little bit harder. In my next example, um, I have uh, cosine cubed sine to the fourth dx. We're going to work with the cosine cubed because working with the sine to the fourth is much harder. So work with cosine cubed. Split it up into cosine squared times cosine times sine. Replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. Distribute, dis distribute the sine to the fourth. You get it this way. Let u be sine. The derivative is cosine. Write it as u to the fourth minus u to the sixth du. Power rule, plug sine back in. So, uh, you know, the, the sine or cosine being an odd power, not too bad because you can use that Pythagorean identity that most of you are familiar with. The next one, we're going to be taking a look at when tangent is a, an odd power. When tangent is an odd power, we're going to use the Pythagorean identity that tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. So if I have tangent cubed times secant to the fifth, I'm going to write it as tangent squared times tangent times secant to the fifth. Replace tangent squared with secant squared minus 1. Now, I broke up the secant to the fifth as secant to the fourth times secant times tangent because in this problem, I'm going to let u be secant eventually, and that secant times tangent that I have here in the parentheses, that's going to be the derivative. So that's why I reorganized it this way. Always going to happen when you, this is always going to happen when you have tangent to the odd power. Distribute the secant, write it this way. U equals secant. Derivative is secant times tangent. Power rule: add one to the power. We put secant back in. Um, it's always that way when it's tangent to the uh, to an odd power. So you want to rewrite it with secant times tangent. You got to have that extra secant in there. Ooh, sorry. Um, my next one are, I think I skipped a couple pages here. When you have secant is an even power, we're going to do the uh, use that same identity, but it's going to be secant squared equals 1 plus tangent squared. So I just move the, the, the tangent over. Um, so I have tangent squared times secant to the fourth. I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to break down the secant squared times secant squared. I'm going to replace the first secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared. I'm going to leave that second one alone because I'm going to distribute this tangent and then u is going to be tangent and d is going to be secant squared and so that's why I want that secant squared right there. Just leave that one alone. Distribute the tangent squared so I get tangent to, you know, tangent squared plus tangent to the fourth. u is tangent, du is secant squared, power rule, add one to the power, put tangent back in. So, you know, again, these are very specific rules of when do you use which identity. Uh, finally, the one that's a little bit more challenging is that when you have something like um, the sine or cosine raised to an even power, you have to use one of these identities, um, that the cosine squared equals 1 half 1 times cosine of 2x, or sine squared equals 1 half 1 to, uh, minus cosine of 2x. Those come from the cosine, those are uh, a manipulation of the cosine of 2 times the angle, what that equals. 
So when you know this, that that five is uh, just an example number five. That's not a five in front of the integral. The integral is the integral of the cosine squared of x dx. Replace it with its identity. I brought the one half out front. Now I can integrate that. I can do this individually because u is just two x. No big deal. Boom. I have it. It's much harder if I ask you something to like the fourth power, or if I ask something um, to the you know if I ask something if I raise it to a higher power it is much more difficult. We'll look at a, one of those in class. Um, this is one where the sine is raised to the fourth power, so that should not be sine to the 22. It should be the sine squared squared. Sorry about that. Um, which I have to write this way, so I put in that identity, and then I square it. When I square it, I can get this relationship right here. So I square the one-half, I get a one-fourth, I square this binomial out, I end up with this relationship right here. The problem is, is I can integrate that one individually, no big deal. I can integrate that one individually, no big deal. I cannot integrate that one individually. I still need to do that integral. So the x is the antiderivative of one, the sine of 2x is the antiderivative of 2 cosine of x. And then I have to consider the 1 fourth times the cosine squared of 2x, because that 1 fourth goes with all of these, so that's why I had to bring it over there. Now, I replace cosine squared of 2x with its identity, which is 1 plus the cosine of 4x. Still got a 1 half there. So it's 1, one eighth. You know, distribute that. Um, and then you could see it, you know, in some cases what would end up happening is because you have like terms here, they would distribute the one fourth and the one eight and combine like terms and all that stuff, but I did not do that. It's a little bit harder when you get into things like the sine to the fourth power or the cosine to the fourth power or maybe even to the sixth power. Okay, well, good luck on some of the trig identities there. I hope uh, you find success. You do have to memorize those patterns and just know which, which situation you're going to use which one.